So this video I'm going to talk about weather systems. You can classify weather systems into two classes, whether it's a high pressure system, low pressure system, doesn't matter. They're either baroclinic or barotropic. So baroclinic is where thermal advection is significant and usually associated with a frontal system. Barotropic, there's no significant thermal advection and the example of that is a subtropical system such as a hurricane or a subtropical high. Baroclinic is driven by thermal advection, that's what makes it baroclinic. Isobars and isotherms are out of phase. Barotropic is not driven by thermal advection, the isobars and isotherms are in phase. We'll cover that in a minute. Thermal gradients are typically weak. As a result, the jet stream does not usually overlie the barotropic system. So if you have a hurricane, which is barotropic, the isobars and isotherms are in phase, you typically don't have a jet stream over top of the hurricane. If that would, were to happen, it would shear the hurricane apart and cause it to fill and dissipate. Okay, so Bayer Clinic, when we talk about out of phase, we're talking about the isotherms, the dashed lines are perpendicular to the solid black lines, which are the isobars, so they are out of phase. So if you think about clinic, being sick, this is out of phase. That's one way to remember that is a bare clinic system. They're out of phase. Okay, barotropic is where the isotherms and isobars are in phase. You can see they're parallel to each other. So there's no thermal advection. So like a hurricane, you'll is a warm core low so you'll have your isobars and then you'll have your isotherms and they will be in phase that is a warm core system okay on a baroclinic system when we say that it is a frontal associated with frontal systems is baroclinic so you have that thermal advection so for example on this one your low pressure system would be up here to the north and your frontal system would come out into the trough and then out to the leading edge of that cold air advection so the cold air advection leading edge right here this is all cold air advection so there's your cold air mass and that the leading edge of that cold air mass is the cold front. So it's a bare clinic associated with a frontal system. That is the perfect example of a bare clinic system. So today we're going to cover bare clinic lows. Bare clinic low is also known as an extratropical cyclone or a frontal low. So when a hurricane, it's a bare tropic system, moves on land, it becomes extratropical. If you hear that terminology, that means it become baroclinic. The isotherms and isobars are out of phase. They can form along a stationary polar front. The stages of baroclinic lows, thermal gradient, an open wave, mature stage, and an occluded stage. Thermal gradient, the ideal state of baroclinic development is stationary frontal zone containing a thermal gradient. Isotherms and isobars are in phase, and there's no or weak thermal advection. So Pedersen's rule is cyclogenesis will occur when and where an area of upper level divergence becomes indicated indicated by PVA, positive vorticity advection becomes superimposed over a low level frontal zone which exhibits weak thermal advection. So essentially where you have positive vorticity which is a measure of rotation, upper level divergence becomes superimposed over a stationary front. Essentially, that's where cyclogenesis will occur, where you will get a baroclinic system. Thermal gradient is basically the distance between the isotherms. The closer they are, the tighter the thermal gradient, the further they are, the weaker the thermal gradient. An open wave, initially a low pressure area forms. So when you get that low pressure over that frontal zone, or like a heat low, you can, that's a, you can get an open wave. It's just a uh, basically an unstable wave. It brings the cold and the warm air masses closer together and intensifies the thermal contrast. 
the this strengthens the upper level features so you can start seeing upper level troughs uh, features in the upper levels that will support that surface low may be intensification of vorticity and the jet stream on upper air charts so the vorticity is the measure of rotation or upper level divergence so when you see that low pressure forming now you got mass being removed from the low pressure system pushing up and then upper level divergence when it hits the triple pulse and the jet stream becomes stronger because of that temperature gradient so an example of the of an open wave just a low pressure system there's a low pressure system superimposed over the stationary front and really there's no thermal advection here or it's very weak a mature stage the deepening deepening of a baroclinic low it's the most intense at this stage mass is being removed from the system increasing its intensity and the decrease in mass comes from the combination of upper level divergence and the release of latent heat as precipitation forms so precipitation is a heating process evaporation is a cooling process so as the molecules condense the water molecules condense on ccn creates these clouds and then becomes super over saturated becomes raindrops as precipitation forms then latent heat is released so that will intensify it because the heat rises so that helps remove more mass out of that low pressure system so the mature stage this is a pretty intense uh, system and you have your low pressure system you can see the leading edge of the warm sector that would be the warm front and then the leading edge of the cold front basically right through that trough will be the leading edge of where the cold where the cold air mass is so the mature stage is the most intense this was like uh, I think March 31st of this year so that was a pretty intense system that moved through and that is a mature low and there are fronts associated with that I just don't have fronts on that on this chart the occluded stage the warm front and the cold front of the system begin to merge a surface low is cut off from the warm sector so it's pretty much moved back and then the surface low moves from the warm side of the thermal gradient to its middle and eventually toward the cold pool so that surface low pushes back you have stacks to in the low of that low pressure system into the upper level it stacks toward the colder air and the occluded low begins to fill becomes barotropic in nature and eventually dissipates so the, like we said the mature low is the most intense once you see the occlusion then you know that system is actually weakening at that point and there's an example of an occluded low there's your occlusion and I don't have the isotherms on this chart but if there were isotherms you would see a thermal ridge right through that occlusion pretty much the occlusion comes out of the low and then right through the thermal ridge and then into the trough of the low pressure system into a cold front and then uh, you can have two different types of occlusions too you have a cold occlusion which is this example the occlusion comes right into the cold front you can also have a warm occlusion where the occlusion comes out and then the triple point is pretty much that occlusion runs right into the warm front so this right here is a uh, cold occlusion and then you got that warm front kind of dropping down so it looks like a little bit of cold air damming going on this high pressure uh, to the east is pretty much that there's still a little bit colder air that this warmer air ahead of that warm front cannot move that colder air so it's just kind of dropping to the south but that's an occluded low all right so we're going to go back real quick and we're going to build a surface chart and let's uh, see what kind of systems are out there right now so let's go the uh, isobars lines of equal pressure now weather stations and stuff like that any weather chart you see typically won't have isotherms on the surface chart i always put them on there because i like to see my thermal advection uh, typically they'll use a thickness chart to uh, identify the jet stream and uh, front 
positions of the fronts. But I, with this program, I can do whatever I want, so I always throw the isotherms on there. I use Celsius because it's every 2 degrees Celsius. It's, they're spaced out a lot more than Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit gets pretty pretty cluttered, so I just use Celsius. In a, it's just a reference anyway. Okay, we're going to bring up the station plots. This is where every weather station across the United States sends out a weather observation. And then the computer deciphers that observation and puts a puts these station plots on these charts. So that way we can see wind direction. We can see our cloud cover. Anything with the black uh, that's the cloud cover. And then we're going to add our at our uh, fronts. Now these fronts are computer generated, so they're not 100% accurate. But like this warm up front right here, that's probably not there. There's really no warm air advection, no major warm sector around this low to justify that that strong of a warm front so I would probably get rid of that now this front with that low pressure system looks like stationary front coming out of that low and then pushing down to the south west and that looks that could be pretty accurate right there kind of was a cold front as a high pressure system was pushing through and then the high pressure system stalled so the leading edge of that cold air mass was stalled and become stationary now what we're talking about with a low pressure system developing on the uh over a stationary front on the tail end of that stationary front you can get some weak thermal advection like we have right here if you look through these isobars and then your direction of flow around the low pushing warmer air into colder air so you have a little bit of warm air advection right there so now you have basically that is an open wave so once that pushes up to the northeast a little bit is depends on the mid level mid levels of which way it's going to steer and if the jet stream gets over top of that it can help remove the mass out of that low pressure system become a mature low pretty quick and then reach its mature system um, mature stage and then pushes off to the northeast to become occluded and then starts to dissipate up usually up into Canada if you like his videos uh, like share and I'll keep them coming. So thanks for watching.